Hello world, welcome back to Savvy Today in this video, we are going to see how you can deploy your Python code to the cloud. And it can be your backend written in the Flask, written in Fast API, written in Django, it does not even matter. This way you will be able to deploy any code and if it is just the RESTful API, it is going to work. And if it contains things like HTML, uh, CSS, things like that, then also this process is going to work. So if you are interested in deploying your Python app for like testing and just for free, so this video is going to be very much useful for you. So please make sure to watch this video till the very end and please make sure to give a like and subscribe to our channel if this video is going to help you. Okay, so this is the website where we are going to do all our magic. The website name is render.com. The name is easy, simple, and yeah, it works. So here, what you can do is you can host your Python code as well as any other services written in Node.js, JavaScript, or even static websites. So here, if we come to the products, and uh, here, if I just simply click on products, or if I just simply scroll down, here you see all the services, like web services, here it has written Django and Flask. So fast API is not mentioned here, but I have been running the fast API application on the render. So yes, I can 100% say that you can run your fast API code too. And also Ruby on Rails Express, which is for the Node.js and Graphical and REST. So all of these things are also available and static sites are also the part of it. And there are multiple different things like the Docker files and things like that. Uh, so Postgres, SQL, Redis and all everything is available here. And also this is free of course, if you are going to just test your application or you want to showcase your project inside the portfolio, you want to put things in the portfolio that are actually live, where interviewer can basically go and check. That is very, very beneficial for you as they can see what you have developed in the real time. And rather than just simply going to the code. So this is the website that we are going to use and you have to make sure that you sign into this website. So the best thing is that you can do, you can basically sign it using your GitHub because the codes that you are going to deploy to the site uh, are going to fetch the code from the GitHub. And as soon as you make any changes to your GitHub, it is automatically going to deploy those. So yes, this is very much uh, interesting thing about it. So you make changes to the Git and upload it to the cloud and it automatically deploys it. So once you have signed in, uh, you will uh, simply click on the dashboard and here you see one of my app is already running. So in the free tier, you are able to run three applications, the one I have already created, but you can create more. So let's start by uh, trying to see what are the pre-requirements to deploy our code onto render.com. So here you see, this is a sample Flask app that I have created and it also has this .env file. So this .env file I especially have created to let you know how to handle it if in your project you have .env file. Let's suppose you might have the .env file where you would have been storing your uh, OpenAI secret keys, database secret codes or things like that. So all your secrets are in your .env file so I'll guide you through the proper way of how you can deploy it. So here I am using .env and OS to load our .env file and os.env to get those env variables. So here uh, I am basically creating this simple endpoint just to let you know that our environment variables are working locally as well as it is going to work when we have deployed it. So you will not be using it to return the response from the uh, what you say env file but here I am going to show you this as an example. So there are four endpoints I have written that you can like try to test it out and here also I have been running it in debugger mode. So the first thing we have the env file and we are also uh, able to get the files from our load.env. And now we have to initialize this project as a git project. So let me just delete this pycast which we don't need. And also before this, please please make sure to create a virtual environment like this. So you can create a virtual environment by writing python dash m env then the name of your virtual environment like env uh, that I have created here that is why the virtual environment is named env. So you can use this command to create a virtual environment so 
either it's your uh, Mac operating system, Linux operating system, or Windows, it is going to work pretty much the same. And once you have this environment, he makes sure to activate your environment to show you. For Linux, you can say Linux and Mac, you can say source.env bin activate. And for, uh, let's suppose, if you are in Windows, you can just like drive it to the path where the activate file is there. So it's mostly inside the bin. So you will write, uh, let me check here if it have. So yes, uh, like PS1. So you would, uh, if you are in Windows, you will simply like dot env slash bin slash activate. And this will uh, simply return, uh, activate your virtual environment. And then make sure that all of these dependencies are installed. Like flask will install, dot env will install. You will just type pip install. Install, let's say, flask, python, dot env. So all of these requirements have to be installed inside your virtual environment, not into your global environment. So I think these things you might have already known. And once everything is done, you have to make sure to have your requirement.txt file ready. So you can write pip freeze requirements.txt and this is going to give you the requirement.txt. And before, okay, before even, uh, let me first activate source activate and you will see uh, like I have activated my environment and here, after activating the environment, please make sure to check if uh, your, uh, sorry, not unicorn, uh, it uses gmnicorn. Yeah, so if I have used gmnicorn, please make sure that your app is working inside your virtual environment and everything is set up and ready to go. So uh, to test this, I will simply go to this URL. I will uh, get this API endpoint and I will get this response. So I'll simply put my postman here. Just give me a minute. So here, uh, this is my API endpoint. And if I click send, I was already testing and it is working perfectly fine. The message API uh, get endpoint reached and also the environment variable. Environment variable test successful. So if you see inside the environment variable, environment variable test successful. Things will be written. And it is working perfectly fine. So now, and now, please make sure to create a requirement.txt file. So you can say pip freeze requirement.txt and that is it. And then you would have this requirement.txt file ready. Now we are ready to move. And also, please, before moving to this next important step, please make this .git ignore file and hide your this env file, the file that contains your environment as well as this .env file that contains all your secret. Please do this before writing git in it, before like initializing the project. So git in it, and then you have to write git add dot. So it will simply add everything. And here you see all of these things are added and this env and .env uh, are left because we don't want to add those. Then we write git commit dash m let's say first commit things like that and we have committed the code but now we also need to put the code into github so go to your github uh, click on new simply uh, create like flash deploy things like that and click on create repository so this will simply create a repository and now you simply need to add the remote and push the code so i will simply copy those code and I'll push it. So now the code is pushed and if you refresh the page, you see it is working. Everything is there. Now, now here the magic side. Make sure you have everything there in requirement.txt file. And requirement.txt file is here. Please make sure that the things are present inside the requirement.txt file, your app.py file is here. And then you have to click on this new. And here we are uh, trying to deploy a web service. So I will click on web service and here build and deploy from Git repository. You will select this and you will click on next. And here you will write the name. So flask deploy, you see the name is like slash repair. You will simply copy it. You will paste it here. And a minute ago, you will simply click on connect. And then you can write the name slash test and then uh, here are the important steps so flask test is written here the branch main is written here 
because we will be using the main branch. So let's suppose you have multiple branch and you want to deploy that particular branch, then you have to select that particular branch here. Then here the runtime is Python. So your code, you are writing the code in Python. So it is Python. If it was Node, you would have used this uh, languages. Next, here pip install requirements.txt. So please make sure that this spelling is correct. Requirements.txt here and this requirement.txt here. Both the spellings should be correct because like in my personal experience, I have made this spelling mistakes and then wasted some time figuring out that it was actually a spell mistake. So please don't make sure don't make those mistakes, just uh, check this. And then here is the start command, G unicorn app, app. So sometimes it auto fills it, but sometimes it don't. So here just make sure to remember this code that you were using to run your code. So let me just give you one more example. So G unicorn is the thing that is going to run your server. This app, the second, uh, this uh, app, the first app is the name of your file. So if you have named your file main.py, so you have to name G unicorn main colon then app and this app is the name of this app, uh, the object that you create of last, the second one. So just uh, keep these things in mind if you are file name is different, like main.py and you write main and this app name is something like slash then like main colon slash things like that. So once we are done, uh, you have to put that command here, G unicorn app colon app. Sometimes it automatically fills it and sometimes it don't. Then simply click on create web service. And as soon as you click here, it will start. First it will try to clone the GitHub repository. Then what it will start doing is to install those requirements that you have mentioned uh, in your requirement.txt file. And then it will uh, try to look it. So here you are saying everything, uh, it is installing things and uploading the builds. And let me tell you one error that uh, happens uh, quite frequently here is that uh, the things in your requirement.txt file does not match. Like here python.env. So if we come to our code and here you see in my uh, requirement.txt file, I have removed uh, okay python.env specific version because I know that while deploying here, uh, it was giving error, like this .env version is not there or not available, things like that. So if something happens like that, make sure to just remove the version. So like if it is packing, if it was giving error for the packing, I will just simply remove packing, it will equal to just the version name for If is the nurse, I will just simply remove things like this, like here. So just uh, do that if you are getting error in the requirements that sometimes happens. And now we see uh, our app is running. So now let's test our board. So I'll simply copy it to the clipboard. I will just simply replace my local endpoint with this. And let's see. Okay, here you see error null get endpoint reached. Why? Because we have not set the environment variable. That is very, very important. That is what I wanted to show. So for setting up the environment variable, you have to go to this environments written here and you have to click this secret file. So, so you have to write the name of the env file. So that is dot p10v and the content. So for doing that content, please make sure to go to your env file and copy every environment variable out there. So just control A, select all, simply copy, paste it here, done. And please make sure to save the changes. So now the changes are saved. Now let's try to see if it is working or not. So what do you think? It is going to work or we are going to get this null. Let's see. We are getting this null again. Why? Because we have to redeploy. So to redeploy, you click on manually deploy and click manually deploy latest commit. So now let's wait for it to be redeployed. And you can also come and see at your dashboard what's the current progress. So here it is like cancel deploy. But we know that we are deploying it here. So now the build is successful. Now it is deploying our code. And let's see. So now it is running. Uh, now I think the server is live. We can go to the dashboard and check that it is deployed now. And once the status is deployed, now we can come and check this. So now you see inside our 
Fast API, we are able to access our environment variables and please make sure to uh, save your environment variables here uh, in the environment file uh, stored inside .env and if you have the environment variable set in your system for that you can just click add environment variable put the key let's say db password things like that and then the value that you have stored in your local system inside your os so you can click and then click on save changes things like that and that is going to work and like this you can add multiple of them so yes uh this was how you can simply deploy the flask app or any python app for that matter onto render.com and also if you want to deploy the fast api the only thing that is going to be changed is this uvcon so instead of gunicon the fast api uses uh uvcon so that is the thing so you can mention uvcon so here i have explicitly mentioned the host and port but you can do that uh, without it it is simply going to pick that in the default and this is the only change that you need to do so if for any reason you want to do for fast you just make the changes in the start command, the start command is going to be the command that you use on the local system to serve your code. So yes, uh, this is how you can simply deploy your code onto the cloud. And if you have learned something new from this, please make sure to like this video and please subscribe to our channel. So that is it for this video. And I will meet you in the next video with something more interesting.